welcome viewers in our learning for knowledge youtube channel today we will describe some basic terms involved in the cooling tower which are make up water blow down evaporation drift losses and very important terms approach and range which are related with the cooling tower efficiency so we will describe this term in detail now now we will move towards the video The cooling towers are very important part of many industries. As you know, the primary task of cooling tower is to reject heat into the atmosphere. Now the cooling tower dissipates heat from water cooled refrigeration, air conditioning and industrial process systems. Typically water is used as the heat transfer medium to dissipate the heat. A cooling tower usually remove a, a cooling tower uses the following means to cool the water flowing through the tower that is it remove or dissipate the heat through these two main processes one is heat transfer and second is mass transfer which is that is evaporation of the water now during this cooling process water losses from the tower there are main two processes through which the water losses one is evaporation losses and second is drift losses in evaporation losses in this process cooling tower system water evaporated from the circulating water into the atmosphere that is the water which comes from the system and now it required to be cooling now when this water passes through this tower from the circulating water into the atmosphere now this water lost by evaporation is replaced with the fresh water because due to these losses which the water which go out in the atmosphere now will be required to make up this water with the fresh water this is evaporation losses theoretically the evaporation losses work out to be 1.8 cubic meter for every 10th 100 <clears throat> 1 million kilo calorie heat rejected that is this is the amount of water losses took place when 1 million kilo calorie heat reject from the cooling tower the formula normally used to carry out the calculate evaporation losses is this is this formula is used to calculate the evaporation losses when water is in circulation into the cooling tower where t1 and t2 is the temperature difference between inlet and outlet of the water which is coming into the tower and then going out after cooling from the tower second loss is drift losses basically when this cooling process took place in the cooling tower some water losses due to liquid droplets entrained in the air the small particles of the water entrained in the air and this water losses from the tower as a fine mist this losses is different from the evaporation losses and it is taken as independent of evaporation losses water which is lost lost through this drift losses is also required or needed to replace with through fresh water drift losses can be calculated with the help of these relationships and it depends on the type of cooling tower that is for natural draft cooling tower we use this expression for induced draft cooling tower we use this expression and for cooling tower which have drift eliminators we use this tower and c in all these relation c is the circulating water and its circulation rate taken in cubic meter per hour now an other important term used in this cooling tower business is make up the water that is added to the cooling tower to replace all these losses that is evaporation blow down drift purge and leakage all type of losses which will be covered by adding a fresh water known as makeup water 
and other important term is blow down when water evaporates from the tower now dissolved solids such as calcium magnesium chloride and silica and other dissolved solid remain in the recirculating water because when water evaporates these solids cannot go with the evaporated water and water left behind becomes increasingly concentrated because the dissolved solids are now increased and quantity of water is decrease and eventually a point comes when further increase in concentration in the water could cause scale or deposits to form in the system this highly concentrated water must be removed to prevent scale depositions or corrosion in the system the removal of this concentrated water is known as blow down so blow down basically is a deliberate loss of water intended to keep the dissolved solid in the water from over concentrated because if water become over concentrated it leads to some problems so blow down must be replaced by the make up or fresh water and blow down can be calculated by this relationship which is equal to evaporation losses is divided by cycle of concentration minus 1 so carefully monitoring and controlling the quantity of blow down provides the opportunity to conserve water in cooling tower operation that is if we take the consideration consider the quantity of the dissolved solid and how much water we need to blow down and keep the water in a balanced position that is it will not lead to scaling or depositions we can conserve the water quantity and instead of wasting the water excess wasting of the water through blow down we can keep eye on this process and then conserve the water used in the cooling tower operation now there is a relationship between evaporation blow down and make up because make up water normally cover the losses took place due to evaporation drift losses and blow down so there is a relationship used to calculate the amount of water required for the make up of the system so make up water must equal to blow down water plus water evaporation to maintain a constant operating water level in the system this expression is used to calculate the make up water that is evaporation plus blow down plus drift these losses must be equal to make up water this expression is used to calculate the quantity of make up water this example shows that if we have a blow down losses 0.63 liters per second and evaporation losses are 6.61 liters per second then we can calculate the make up water quantity by adding up of these two losses this is very simple relationship which we can be used to calculate the quantity of make up water required now another important term in the cooling tower is approach how approach can be defined or explained now the difference between the cooling tower outlet water the outlet water is basically the water which is now cold after uh, passing from the process of cooling tower now its temperature has been reduced so the cooling tower outlet water which is cold water temperature and ambient water wet bulb temperature is called as approach of the cooling tower this is the difference between the temperature outside well bulb wet bulb temperature of the atmosphere and the cold water temperature that is the water coming out from the cooling tower the difference is equal to the approach what the approach represents what is the benefit of finding the approach the approach represents the cooling tower capability or how much capability is the cooling tower can reduce the temp temperature of the water coming from the system which is hot and then we get a cold or cool water so in general the larger the tower the smaller is the approach so approach of the cooling tower is calculated is cooling tower outlet water temperature minus wet bulb temperature the significance of approach is the smaller the number of approach, approach the more efficient the cooling tower the bigger the number 
a bigger the approach number the less efficient of the cooling tower so a normal cooling tower range of 5 to 9 degree fahrenheit is used for a good or normal cooling tower operation for its cooling tower approach if it goes beyond 9 then the efficiency of the cooling tower also goes down another important term is range the cooling tower's main feature is the ability to reduce the temperature of hot water and produce cool water so it can be recirculated and again it go to the system and take the heat and come into the cooling tower and then again cool down so this is the main function of the cooling tower so the difference between the cooling tower inlet temperature that is hot water temperature that is the water coming from the process industry and cooling tower outlet temperature that is the cold water which is obtained after it passes through the cooling tower is called range of the cooling tower and we can calculate the range of cooling tower the cooling tower inlet temperature minus cooling tower outlet temperature this diagram shows how can or uh, this describe the difference between approach and range now you can see the red line shows the hot water temperature that is inlet water of the cooling tower and then it passes through the cooling tower and then we obtained a cold water temperature that is out and this water will go again into the system so into the tower and out from the tower so the difference between this in and out is called range however in case of approach the difference between this cold water temperature that is out temperature to the wet wet bulb temperature this arrow shows that the water which is coming uh, the make up water you can say so that's why the arrow is inside so the difference between the wet bulb temperature and cold water temperature is called approach this is this diagram shows the difference between range and approach this is a typical or you can say the again this uh, description of range and approach so now we are using some typical our uh, temperature it is for illustration purpose only so this is the hot water which is at 85 degree f and this is the 70 degree f cold water which is obtained when the, it pass through the cooling tower so this is the difference 85 Minus 70. This is cooling tower range. And now, in case of approach, if the wet bulb temperature is 65, then and the cool cold water is 70 degree F. Now, the difference of these two temperature is called approach. So you can think or see that as this delta is coming closer and closer, we are getting lesser value. And if we get less value, then this is the efficiency. of the cooling tower is increasing and cooling tower become more efficient however if for example wet bulb temperature instead of 65 if for example it goes to 55 and cold water temperature remain 70 then this is this temperature is this delta of temperature is now become bigger as compared to this 65 so instead of 5 it will become 15 and now the efficiency of the cooling tower become less so these terms explain in this video are very useful and help to understand the concept of cooling tower and how the temperature differences play an important role in the operation of cooling tower thank you very much for watching this video we will try to provide you more knowledgeable video in these fields as well as in other fields keep watching our channel and see you in the next video thank you very much